Okay, here we are. My name's Sean, and um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, some of the updates kind of going on. And if you're uh, new to electronic cigarettes, uh, pay attention, because uh, this is pretty important. You're coming in kind of late in the game. Uh, back in 2009, things were pretty difficult for us uh, electronic cigarette users. That's when I started using electronic cigarettes. Uh, you may have followed some of my other videos. I did do a video uh, regarding the FDA back in 2009. And then, of course, after the uh, court cases, uh, what developed there was... Um, the FDA lost in federal court and they lost an appeals uh, court, which was great. And a lot of us uh, breathed a big sigh of relief. But the truth be told, it uh, did still get um, under the umbrella of the FDA. And uh, they have been planning for a long time to do what they call deeming regulation. Deeming regulation by a government agency usually isn't good, especially if they throw in that word deeming. And uh, that is what the uh, the current concern is uh, it's been brought out quite a few times that they were going to do some regulation. Uh, nothing really has uh, come about. Uh, recently in December, they made a uh, statement that here in April 2013, they're going to release uh, some sort of proposed deeming regulation. Um, uh, I, I don't want to be an alarmist as far as this goes, but everything's slanted. If we've listened to the FDA over the years, they do not want this product around. So it could be a really bumpy ride for us. Uh, ironically, after the FDA made their statement, um, the EU health ministry, um, so that's uh, pretty much all your EU uh, countries there, they, of course, um, also said that they were going to uh, put in some regulations there. Uh, they did, in fact, are working on that, and they're moving along quite swiftly. Uh, it's pretty unfortunate for everybody in the EU because uh, one of the things that it appears with the regulation is they're going to reduce the amount of nicotine allowed in the cartridges where it's really close to smoke and air, uh, and it will not be beneficial for those users. Fortunately for us here in the United States, back in 2009, we had a lot of e-cig users who uh, did call their congressmen, uh, did make sure that uh, everybody uh, was known of using electronic cigarettes and how good that they actually work for them. Uh, I am actually one of those people. Um, I still continue to use electronic cigarettes. That's my choice. I know of a lot of people um, who used uh, e-cigs, and now they no longer use electronic cigarettes or uh, tobacco cigarettes, and that's great for them. Uh, for myself, I was probably going to be smoking tobacco cigarettes uh, until, well, you know, the final days. So here I am, I'm using e-cigs. It has been beneficial for me on, uh, on my personal level. Getting back to the whole uh, FDA situation, folks, um, this is one of those things, if you're not subscribing to my YouTubes, uh, you might want to. Um, when the time does come where the regulation comes out, I have a pretty good feeling that it may include some things that we don't like. Uh, there's a lot of things and a lot of buzz as far as um, uh, no longer having an e-liquid by bottle. Um, of course, bringing down the amount of nicotine level. Uh, if some of you really follow things more in depth, uh, in the 2009 Tobacco Act, uh, technically uh, within that, um, there's supposed to be no new tobacco products. As many of you may know, electronic cigarettes were labeled as, of course, uh, tobacco products. So will the FDA impose that on there, where no model after 2009 could no longer be sold in the United States, which is pretty much every model that is being made uh, for the electronic cigarettes. So it's a really, you know, what's going to be happening. And that's one of those things, fortunately, here we are in the United States, where they can propose their deeming regulations. And of course, us as uh, the public, uh, the citizens of the United States, uh, we can contact our uh, congressmen, we can contact our representatives to make sure that there could be a congressional hearing or, or something along those lines so that we are heard. Um, it's pretty unfortunate that this particular product has had such a rough ride as far as coming of age. And uh, you're still just now starting to see it in some of your retail establishments. Um, you know, if you do a little bit of research, you'll notice uh, the, the gum or the patch for a lot of us. I never personally tried it. I didn't think it would work for me. I've heard of a lot of people who did try it, and it didn't succeed for them. Um, the fact of the matter with that, if you do your due diligence, you don't just listen to some guy on YouTube and uh, check out, do some Googles there uh, as far as uh, what the success rate is for some of those products. And, you know, the things that have been reported are near the 4% mark. So that means one out of 20 people are successful. The thing that's discouraging with that 
that is you, you know, you get up one day, you say, Hey, I'm going to stop smoking. You go to the store, you buy one of these products. And a week later, you're back on uh, regular tobacco cigarettes. You feel personally like you failed. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate that you're sold a product. Um, they're making a profit on it. And here you are the one, you know, left feeling like you're a failure, uh, electronic cigarettes. Um, I don't want to put out, you know, these numbers as, as a factual on my side. It's a, I'll just put it out as hearsay. Um, I did not personally see this study, but I believe it was a Greek study. I know it was a European study, a recent one of what success rates were for electronic cigarettes. For a lot of us, uh, you know, who were smoking regular tobacco cigarettes, and I heard a number of 67%. If that number is true, that's impressive. Um, that's pretty good. That means, you know, out of 10 people, nearly seven of them are successful on it, uh, from now, no longer using tobacco cigarettes and now using electronic cigarettes. And then if they decide that they're getting off electronic cigarettes, a lot of us have found that pretty easy to reduce our nicotine levels slowly over time and then, uh, do away with it altogether. So those are some of the, uh, interesting things that we're seeing, um, with electronic cigarettes and back to the FDA, we know that, uh, they're usually work very closely with pharmaceutical companies and the pharmaceutical companies here you have of course those products I was just talking about you know whatever our other alternatives you know we have pharmaceutical pills out there that really haven't had great results um, you know we've heard of uh, people unfortunately passing on uh, from using the products not a great deal um, but a lot of other ones saying that they had some pretty psychedelic dreams from it too so you know it Looking at the different products that are out there, are electronic cigarettes, you know, healthy? I would never say that it's healthy, um, but when you look at the the bigger evil, as we would call it, uh, of tobacco cigarettes, there really isn't any comparison for anybody who tries this and uh, works on it for a bit. So. In closing, all I'm saying right now is something's going to be coming down the pike and uh, it could be a really bumpy ride for us and it's one of those things to stay alert and when it does happen, take the time to make sure uh, if we do have to uh, be aggressive and contact our uh, government representatives to make sure that us as United States citizens can still use this product because it's important for a lot of us. Uh, it's been a, a game changer, a life changer, and a deal changer for myself and for a lot of people I know. So. This is Sean. I'm just giving you an update about uh, pretty much what's been going on, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.